Hello Flight Simmers, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be part 5 of my cockpit build where we're going to be looking at the center pedestal and the main instrument panel area. As indicated in the previous parts, the center pedestal and main instrument panels were all made by Martin. They're made out of steel and an exact replica of the real thing. Starting down with the center pedestal area, uh, this air vent is real and functional and adjustable and it's hooked up to a blower inside the center pedestal which is controlled by the air source panel. I also have it hooked up to a relay so it turns off and on with the main uh, generators in the jet and it simulates the environmental control system. Pedal adjust handle is an aluminum 3D uh, copy which is hooked up to the real mechanism into the rudder pedals. I can adjust the rudder pedals fore and aft. Uh, the rudder pedals are real simulator uh, all made out of aluminum and uh, they're also an exact replica and function the same as well. The instrument mode panel is real. Um, as you can see, I'm using an EHSI, so an Electronic Horizontal Situational Indicator, which are normally outfitted in the newer blocks and they would have a blank plate here as the instrument mode is controlled by this button. Um, I like using up the real panels. The Block 50 that I'm simulating from the Hellenic Air Force uh, also doesn't use the EHSI so generally I'm using this as a regular HSI with the instrument mode. Um, so the uh, course and heading knobs are functional. This mode select I switch to control the 3D cockpit in the sim so uh, unless I'm doing something wrong or I'm an, unaware of every time I jump into a 3D uh, world the 3D cockpit is on by default so I use this to turn it off. Fuel quantity select is real as well. Uh, you can also adjust. It's hooked up to my sorry, hooked up to my AIC uh, fuel select panel, so I use that to control uh, the needles in the gauge. This angle of attack is an AMI. The VVI altimeter and Mach meter are all SimTech. Uh, I sent all four of these units into SimTech and they basically refurbished everything, changed a lot of the bulbs and the gearing. Um, even though all these are dated in the 80s, when I first hooked them up, they all worked, which is just shows the quality you get out of those gauges. But now that they kind of refurbished everything, um, they're going to obviously last me the lifetime. These are just, you know, phenomenal instruments, just like the real jet and you really can't beat them. The only problem is if you buy them new, you probably almost can't afford them either <clears throat> as some of these items are in the tens of thousands of dollars. So you kind of have to get your hands on an old one if you want any, if you want any chance of having those in the pit. Uh, this angle of attack by AMI was a lower fidelity model. So I was quite disappointed when I turned it on and realized it didn't have proper backlighting. So I did a bit of a redneck hick job there and I installed a little bulb there and a bulb there. You know, it's not the best, but uh, it basically, you know, if I turn the lights off here, it, uh, it at least does the backlighting, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's such a precision uh, instrument inside. I didn't want to mess inside the casing at all. So I drilled a little hole in the bezel and just dropped the bulb in. So it's not the best, but uh, it'll certainly do the job. The uh, ADI is Martin as well. So it's a digital one. But again, um, you know, one day I hope to get my hands on a real ADI from SimTech. But until then, this digital one will have to do. Uh, it's got the floodlight inside, like the side consoles, is a warm white LED, so it gives it that original uh, bulb look. And again, I can control that with the, uh, with the um, interior lighting panel, so nice little effect there. Uh, the, let's see, this glare shield for the uh, center pedestal is real. Uh, the ICP housing or HUD box, whatever you want to call it, is made by Cage, so it's a replica, and it's just a fantastic job he did. I don't know what kind of angle I can get here, but it's got the simulated camera up front, 
The HUD is a, it's just plexiglass, about a bunch of them, so in case they get scratches. I didn't bother with the realistic HUD, is from what I'm reading, uh, you know, there's guys who are making them work, but trying to get the whole focus to infinity stuff uh, can be quite a challenge, although some guys are coming up with some good solutions. In the end, for me, I just find it's easier to have the HUD on the screen, and as I'm looking through, I can see the HUD through here, and really, I mean, in my mind, it, it it just does fine, and it's a lot easier, because quite often I'm moving the cockpit around to do work on it and stuff, and I just think it'd be a bit of a nightmare to kind of line everything up with the image on the HUD to line it up to the screen. So that's how I use it, and it works great for me. Moving over to the right side, the engine extension is all steel and made by Martin. It's an exact replica. The engine gauges are made by Beta Innovations, which are no longer in business, unfortunately, but these are high quality air core gauges. Backlighting is controlled by the interior light panel, so that can be adjusted just like everything else. The fuel flow indicator is made by Martin. Um, it is a digital display, but it's in an aluminum um, multi-layered bezel here, so it's got a nice uh, 3D look to it, which makes it look really good. The body is made by Simtech, fully functional. Another uh, instrument I sent in to them that they refurbished, so it'll last me a lifetime. This data entry display is also made by Martin. Try to position this where you don't get a glare. Another one of his fantastic items, all high quality, really good replica, everything works. The indexers are made by Martin as well. Let me turn the uh, lights on here. As you can see, uh, really nice, all aluminum with digital displays inside. You can actually, I'll try it on this, you can actually adjust the brightness. Let's see if that makes a different effect. There you go, you can see that. Hard to see in the camera, but you can adjust the brightness on those as well, so they're fully functional. Uh, the ICP is real. It's a night vision one, obviously. Um, I'm going to probably at one point take the NVG filters out of it so I get a white backlight just to go with the uh, half block 50 look that I'm going for as they have all white backlighting. Uh, maybe we'll go over here to this side. The radar warning receiver is made by Martin. So the screen's made by Martin. However, the bezel is a replica that I 3D printed up and made to represent or replicate the ALR-93, so part of the ASPIS system that's uh, used by the Hellenic Air Force. Um, again, if I hit the lights here, uh, everything is functional. This little toggle switch uh, switches between the night and day missile activity light, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the threat warning indicator is a replica made by myself. Um, uh, I don't have the backlighting done on this one yet. It's still something I have to do in the works. But it uh, is fully functional as well through the BMS software and AIC. Or at least, you know, as, uh, as much as we're simulating anyways. As there's not a lot known about uh, this uh, electronic counter warfare suite compared to the you know the American stuff that's out there uh, the um, let's see here this um, miscellaneous extension uh, to my surprise is actually mounted to the glare shield so this is a real glare shield on both sides and it's actually part of the uh, miscellaneous uh, panel extension it's just kind of mounted to this so it's all one piece so that's all real uh, this miscellaneous panel is real this is actually a US Block 5052 version. As you can see, it's got an ECM light. So I removed the ECM light. I just put some tape over it here. And, you know, just to kind of simulate what the Hellenic Air Force uses, which is basically a modern MOU version. So it's got the drogue chute. Uh, and, of course, it's got the ADV mode for the TFR. Um, what else we got here? I think that's done for this. Uh, the MFDs. The MFDs are real bezels, uh, night vision, obviously. 
I'm um, hoping to get my hands on some white backlight so I can swap out those and get the proper all white backlight that this cockpit should have. The LCD screens, uh, these are all new actually, with uh, which I'll probably talk about in update uh, 2021, which is coming out soon. Um, but uh, what I had before was real MFDs, which were kind of... Uh, all ripped all the guts out and put in smaller LCD screens. So um, you probably couldn't notice in the video, but they didn't quite fit the whole side of the bezel. I went with that solution thinking it'd be easier to just pull the MFDs in and out. But um, after a while, I ended up wanting to switch them. So these are just one big panel kind of behind the miscellaneous, uh, kind of behind the main instrument panels. Um, I had to do some hacking and grinding and sanding to be able to just drop a nice flat display behind. It was a lot of tedious work, but I'm glad I did as these displays, uh, you know, they fill up the entire screen surface area. They look better. Another member had made the mounts on the back that hold the screen in. One of the interesting uh, setups with the screen and this video camera is not really doing how the screen looks to me, uh, you know, outside the camera. So when you're actually looking at it, it doesn't know justice at all. But the screens were meant to be installed uh, inverted. And by doing so, with the angle that you're looking at the screen, you have to put them on max brightness, which I kind of thought might have been a bad thing. But turning them on, a, on max brightness, like I said, you can't really tell um through the camera but it gives the screen more of a monochrome glow look for so the so the green monochrome mfds which i'm using this cockpit setup uh, actually looks more realistic than an lcd panel that you'd see on a multi uh color display so uh it ended up being all better in the end switching these screens out and get rid of the real ones so the eyebrow lights are all real i'll turn those on and I was lucky to get my hands on what you'd see in the older block models. So it's hard to see with the camera. I guess if I go close. Again, the camera doesn't do it really justice. They're not that bright uh, in real life. But it's got the black lettering on the red background, which would be accurate to this block model. But I do kind of like that look compared to what they put in for the night vision uh, cockpits with just the red lettering on a black background and just just really brighter and you know they're all some pretty serious uh, cautions that you want to be aware of so when they turn on there's really no missing them the uh, master caution uh, switch is real the ECM light was one I pulled out of a different switch and then modified to fit into this eyebrow light housing because for the MLU and at least uh, the Hellenic Air Force, they have that to indicate uh, to indicate sorry the ECM light. The IFF ident and fault acknowledge uh, little button switch setup here is real. Right now, as IFF ident is not used in BMS, I use this switch to turn off and on the 3D cockpit view to switch to like a track IR if you want to pan my head around which I hardly ever do, but it's set up there in case I want to do it. Okay, so that'll conclude part five. Uh, coming up right away, I hope to have an update on all the changes I did here in 2021, which should complete my cockpit series videos. So again, as usual, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.